Hey everyone, hope you're doing really well this week. I got a message through my email address, therepairshare.gmail.com, from a subscriber who said that they have one of these Dell Latitude 5400s, and they had gone through the video I did a number of months ago on how to repair it, and they were looking for some help. So I said, why don't you join our Let's Help a Subscriber series? So that's what he did. I asked him for a mail with a few pictures and a brief description of what the problem was. So let's get a look at that brief description. I think it's a good exercise here. If you guys follow along and at every step you see where you would bring the troubleshooting. See if you think I've got it right. If you think I'm doing it right, tell me down in the comments below. If you think I've got anything wrong, you can put that down there too. So let's take a look at the description of the fault. So this is the fault. Hi, I followed your checks for 19 volt as far as the input to the power management I see. I have 19 volt power coming down to PR700, which is the current sense resistor. So let's go back to the motherboard and the schematic and see how far this 19 volts is getting. So my subscriber is getting 19 volts at PR700. So let's follow the path that our 19 volts takes as it enters the laptop and goes up to PR700. As you can see, this is our DPC input jack right here. Uh, the two pins of this, which are down as 2 and 3, connect onto PL4. So that's where our 19 volts comes in, and onto PL4, which is this right here. After it exits PL4, it comes onto the source pins of this MOSFET, which is PQ9. And if you look on the motherboard here, you can see PQ9. This is the MOSFET right here. Now, after it leaves, PQ9 on the drain pins, it then connects to a second MOSFET which is PQ4 and as you can see we have PQ4 here which refers to this. And after PQ4 it leaves on pins 1, 2 and 3 and then goes further down. Uh, it's then described as 19.5 volts underscore SDC underscore in and we'll have to track it further down the schematic. But he's obviously good onto this point here. I searched further down the schematic and I found 19.5V underscore SDC underscore in. So as you can see the next component in line is the PR700 that is referenced in the email. So I followed your checks for 19 volts as far as the input to the power management I see. I have 19 point, uh, sorry I have 19 volt power coming down to PR700. So we're all good to this point here. And if we look on the actual motherboard itself you'll see that PR700 is nowhere to be seen here. It's actually further down the board. So this is the component right here, PR700. So this is where he is measuring 19 volts. Okay, so it looks like we're good up to that first current sense resistor, PR700. Um, what's the fault? Well, he goes on to describe the fault. I am not reading 19 volts, not at the coil pictured. And here is the picture of the coil. So it's PL701, it's this coil right here. Contacts have failed on one side, if not both sides. I couldn't get any resistance reading across it. I think it has failed internally, or as good as. Is it worth trying to resolder? Is this a no-brainer? Replace the coil and we're back on the road? Or is there likely other issues to cause this? And I'm just going to show you the other two pictures that came with that. So this is the second one. And then the third one. Going back to our schematic for a second, this is PR700 where we are correctly measuring our 19 volts. This is our power management IC. And this PL701 is the inductor that we saw in the last three pictures. Now that's all the information I had before advising the subscriber what to do next. Why don't you hit pause and write down what you would advise them to do. And I'll be back in a second. Okay, and here is the advice that I gave. First of all, with regard to this inductor, which was taught to be the cause of the problem, I said that the solder joints did not look good to resolder them and then check for continuity across the inductor. But I did confirm that I didn't think this had anything to do with the reason that the laptop was not booting. Secondly, since we have established that we have 19 volts on PR700 before the power management IC, but nothing, no voltage from that point on, I suggested that there may either be a problem with the power management IC or possibly a short further down the circuit. So my advice was to switch off the power and check for a short on the main power rail. Now on these NVDC circuits, that power rail is this one right here. 
So this feeds all of the secondary circuits and what we want to check is see if there is any issue with this. To measure for a short on the main power rail I suggested switching the laptop off and disconnecting it completely from all power, introducing the multimeter in diode mode, placing the red probe to ground and a black probe to pin 3 or 4 of PQ701. And when he did that, he got a reading of 0, 0.000. So if we have a short and we want to flush out that shorted component, we all know at this stage how to do it. You introduce your DC power supply, connect your black wire to ground, connect red wire to wherever we detect the short, which in this case is pins 3 and 4 of PQ701. And I always start the voltage very low. So I've started at 1 volt and 100 milliamps that was my suggestion and to bring that up pretty quickly and then try and touch around the board he doesn't have a terminal camera so just to touch around the board and see if anything heated up and this is the response that I got one if not both are scorching hot it pulls nearly the full 5 amps at 1.3 volts and this was the picture that accompanied it so he's pointing to these two capacitors right here and a further question was asked as to how to distinguish which one was the faulty one. So what I suggested was to simply douse the two capacitors in either lighter fluid or flux, inject again and see which one burnt off the flux the quickest. The response to that suggestion was as follows. Hi, I used IPA to pinpoint that right one. That's the right one here. Removed it and the laptop is running perfect now. Will it run all right without the cap or should I try and uh, basically get a replacement for it. So, as you can see, there are no markings on any of the passive components. There are on the ICs, but none on the components. So even though I have a schematic for this, I have no way of identifying any of the capacitors and what their values are. So we have two options here. We can either just leave the capacitor off altogether and just run it with the one, two, three remaining capacitors. Or, if you wanted to be a purist and you wanted to definitely replace every component that you remove, you could take off the component beside it, measure the capacitance, uh, get another one that's the same capacitance and the same size and put it in as a replacement. And that is how I help to fix my subscriber's laptop, by simply sending them a couple of videos with instructions on the steps to take. I am conscious, of course, that this probably really only works for shorted power rails or shorted secondary rails you know where it's just it's easy to talk somebody through how to find a short how to inject voltage you know this won't help us if there's an IC that's blown and it needs to be replaced or something that's more difficult it just happens that all of the subscriber laptops that I've helped out on the channel always seem to be shorts on the main power rail but I'm very interested to hear your opinions down below. What did you suggest at every step? Is there anything at any of the steps that you think that I should have suggested something differently or something better? Please post in the comments below. I've just bought four broken laptops from eBay and I have plenty of content for the next month. So please like and subscribe and I'll be back with something else next week.